If you're waiting for pyrolutamide to be FDA approved because you think it's superior to the conventional treatments for androgenic alopecia that are available right now, like ritasteride and minoxidil, you are wrong. But if you try to look beyond that and try to understand the true value of pyrolutamide and how to actually use it, all your hair loss problems will simply go away. But before jumping right into the subject, I wanted to go ahead and subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with the latest hair loss treatments and new release data I post here regularly. A couple of weeks ago, I posted a video on my channel where I talked about a post uh, published by a gentleman who goes by the name OK Temperature on a popular subreddit, uh, Tressless subreddit where I discussed and tried to demonstrate in the video that the results he posted were not realistic at all. Uh, you can go check the video if you're interested, but I just wanted to mention it in this video to emphasize that we have this wrong idea about pyrolutamide. From the data we have so far, pyrolutamide is not superior in terms of efficacy to finasteride. So there is no results that we will see after using pyrolutamide that we haven't already seen in finasteride. That argument does not stand in the case of GT20029, for example, a brand new pharmacological class of drugs, uh, Protex, that may well indeed uh, fully 100% reverse hair loss. We don't know yet. But in the case of pyrolutamide, we know that the results we will get once it will get FDA approved will not surpass those of finasteride neither to test right. So as a quick tangent, please do not believe anyone who posts such posts on the hair loss forums, especially when uh, this guy indicated that he achieved such results in only seven weeks, which is impossible. Because as far as we know, and the duration of the hair loss cycle, you would need at least three months of continuous treatment to observe any results, at least three months. But what is truly the difference in terms of the efficacy between pyrolutamide and finasteride? Is it that drastic? Will we uh, achieve a similar result of achieving finasteride after getting uh, pyrolutamide FDA approved? Or is it uh, more similar to minoxidil in terms of improving the hair count? Well, fortunately we have the phase 2 data results for the efficacy of pyrolutamide. And in the phase 2 clinical trial for pyrolutamide done by Kintor Pharma, after 24 weeks of applying pyrolutamide twice a day, there was improvement of 16 hairs per square centimeter versus placebo group. To put that into perspective, finasteride achieved a 20 hairs per square centimeter improvement from baseline versus placebo group. So finasteride is about 20% more effective than pyrolutamide in terms of uh, improving the hair count. But the data we have about finasteride is a two year long uh, clinical trial while the data we have about pyrolutamide is only about 24 weeks so the data may change when we get the phase 3 clinical data uh, from Kintor Pharma but this is the information we have so far and I want to emphasize this as much as possible even when we get new data about pyrolutamide's efficacy chances are it would not surpass the efficacy of finasteride so when you see such results indicating achieving and realistic, nearly impossible uh, hair regeneration results from solely using pyrolutamide, you should not believe it. Nor should you aim to do that. I think you will be missing the point if you try to surpass the efficacy of finasteride solely using pyrolutamide. The true value of pyrolutamide, in my opinion, is the possibility of using it as an adjunct treatment to both finasteride and minoxidil. That's because Pyrolutamide has a completely different mechanism of action than finasteride. Finasteride blocks the 5 alpha reductase enzyme that, that turns testosterone into DHT that goes ahead and attacks the hair follicles, while pyrolutamide is an androgen receptor antagonist. It binds to the androgen receptor on the hair follicle and it sort of blocks that receptor from binding to a DHT, so the DHT affects on uh, the hair follicle will uh, not be effective in this case. So you could see that finasteride and pyrolutamide have completely different mechanisms of action. Uh, so they could be uh, associated and used together um, to give a synergic effect. And this is the first strong point of pyrolutamide. 
the possibility of using it as an adjunct treatment. So if you could just imagine if pirolodomide gets FDA approved and GT20029 maybe gets FDA approved also in the um, next couple of years, you could use finasteride, pirolodomide and GT20029, achieving a wonderful result that we could have not dreamed of solely by using finasteride. If we could make somewhat of a theoretical calculation here, Theoretically, by using pyrolutamide and finasteride, we could achieve up to 35 hairs per square centimeter improvement from baseline by using those drugs together. Now, the second point that I wanted to mention about pyrolutamide, and this is the second strength point, is the fact that pyrolutamide does not cause any sexual side effects, as opposed to finasteride. We know that finasteride causes some sexual side effects in some people, which is not the 2% uh, ratio that a lot of YouTubers are talking about, like Hair Cafe. I do think that the uh, percentage of people or patients using finasteride that experience actually sexual side effects is way much bigger than 2%. Uh, I think it's in the maybe 10-15% and there are some clinical data that affirms um, that assumption. But it's a low uh, percentage of patients, but it's possible. And it's one reason that a lot of patients quit using finasteride or don't even start using it in the first place because they're afraid for their um, sexual health. But pyrolutamide having a completely different mechanism of action. Yes, it is an antagonist of the androgen receptor, but it's a topical antagonist. And there is so little of systemic absorption which we already confirmed in the phase two clinical data that we received from Kinter Pharma. So when you apply pyrolutamide on your scalp, it will not get absorbed into your systemic circulation and the systemic side effects are rare or non-existent. That doesn't mean that pyrolutamide comes without side effects. There are some side effects associated with the topical administration of the drug like pruritus and rash. Uh, I think topical dermatitis as well, but in terms of se sexual side effects, there are none, which provides an alternative for patients who are maybe afraid for their sexual health to use in pyrolutamide and do not keep stenting when their androgenic alopecia is actually progressing. So those are the two points that you should focus and emphasize on when thinking about pyrolutamide. Not that pyrolutamide would be superior to finasteride or anything that we've seen already, probably wouldn't, uh, those results, again, are not realistic and not true, uh, certainly not in seven weeks, but uh, the two strength points that you should focus on is the possibility of using it as an adjunct treatment, so we get a additive effect of both using a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor and a, an androgen receptor antagonist like pyrolutamide, plus maybe a protac uh, proteolysis targeting chimera like GT20029 in the future. And the second strength point is the fact that it doesn't produce sexual side effects. So that's it about pyrolonamide. If you want to know more about GT20029, you should go watch this video where I talked in details about the final updates that we got a month ago about GT20029. Also check my video about vertoporfin, which is one of the leading candidates in my opinion to actually cure, the word cure is pretty important in this case. Um, it will cure androgenic alopecia in my opinion and I explained that in that video, you could go watch it if you're interested. I will put both videos in the description. And uh, yeah, please don't forget to press the like button if you found the video informative. Also subscribe to the channel and as always, stay safe.